When I was a kid, I was in love with Audrey Hepburn. Watching her in Roman Holiday, I think I was 10 or 11, and I just thought she was as elegant as anything I'd ever seen. I always loved Grace Kelly, too, from To Catch a Thief. I mean, when she comes out of the water in To Catch a Thief, I mean, you just go, oh, that's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. I grew up in a Catholic church, and uh, so there were always these sort of very religious, uh, iconic pieces that you'd see in, just in your local churches, and they were very big parts of our lives, the cross and the altar. When I was about 10 years old, we went to Washington, D.C., and, uh, and the Lincoln Memorial was the one. I remember just walking up those stairs and looking at this carved piece of marble that uh, had nothing to do with a carved piece of marble. When people lose their culture, uh, then they start to lose their sense of identity. The name of the movie is Monuments Men. We tend to like to do very cynical films because we, th we find them more interesting. But we felt like we wanted to do one that was the good guys win and, uh, and you're fighting the ultimate bad guy. We've been doing World War II movies since World War II. And the reason is because you have the greatest bad guy in film history. But the stories have been told so much that you're running out of stories. But this was a story nobody'd heard. It's the greatest art heist in the history of the world. Hitler designed this Fuhrer Museum, put a model of it actually in the bunker with him. He wanted to steal all of the art, all of the great art in the world. He stole five million pieces of art. He also destroyed pieces that they, they would call degenerate art, which was anything that didn't have colors that you would find actually in reality. What he was doing was stealing these cultures so that they could never come back. He was going to own them all, put them all in his museum, and uh, rule the world. He would have gotten away with it had he not uh, lost the war. He was a failed artist at, in Vienna. There were three artists studying there, and the other two uh, were kept, and he was let go. We actually, in the film, we show a couple of his watercolors, and, uh, and it's an interesting thing because you, you wish he was just a little bit better painting. There would have been a lot more people left alive. Well, I'll tell you, there's a funny thing. You could go to a Capra film, for instance, and watch the end of It's a Wonderful Life. You cannot end a movie that way anymore. If you made that movie today, Lionel Barrymore, the bad guy, mm -hmm. would have to be hauled away in handcuffs. But he doesn't. And then we just forget about him because Capra's version of ending that film was living well as the best revenge. You couldn't end Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid the way they ended. I've showed that to young kids who just love the movie, love the movie, and then you freeze frame with them getting shot, and they're all, their mouth, they're like, no, no, no. There's a lot of movies like that, particularly films from the late 60s and mid 70s, that you just couldn't end them like that, and that's why we love them, because they broke all the rules. Yeah. I actually like working by myself, really, most of the time. I only work by myself. We're talking about the film Gravity, and Alfonso directing it. You are alone, you've got Alfonso Cuaron in your ear inside this bubble and you're you're spinning around on this giant machine and then the, there's a camera spinning around that so you're constantly in motion. The trickiest part was learning to talk, speak quickly, but move 50% slower because you have to be in space and you can't move. It's a trick to be able to talk at the same thing and move and do all these actions slower. My career has been sort of a lot of base hits and doubles, not a lot of triples and home runs. But I don't mind that. I, I like that. It's a good place to be. You got to try and get on base, you know.